Please be seated. Let us join in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Lamb of God and Lord of Lords, call us who are called to be your people along the way of the cross. Draw us who would draw near to our Lord to the foot of the cross. Cleanse us who are not worthy to approach with the pardon of your cross. Instruct us who would be your disciples in the school of your cross. Arm us for the battles of holiness by the might of your cross. Bring us in the fellowship of your sufferings to the victory of the cross and seal us in the kingdom of your glory among the servants of the cross. And to you, our crucified God, be all the glory and the praise, world without end. Amen. A reading from the second chapter of the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we continue our worship with the offering.
bless in your goodness, loving God, the gifts we bring you now in response for that self-giving love poured out upon the cross. And grant that through our gifts, we may share in bringing to others the glory of the love revealed in Christ crucified and raised. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. The words of a dying man offer us what we most need to hear. Each of the sayings recorded in the Gospels point us to fundamental truths by which our faith is secured. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Well, actually, they thought they did know what they were doing. They thought they were getting rid of a troublesome nuisance in the person of the prophet from Galilee. He disturbed the status quo. He angered the religious establishment. And as so often happens in situations like that, people in power are not too careful in the use of that power. And so through a miscarriage of justice and through appalling cruelty, they thought they had rid themselves of this nuisance. So they did know what they were doing, except that Jesus was also right. Because they did not know who Jesus was, they did not know that the act of crucifixion was the ultimate act of rejection and rebellion against God. And for that ultimate rebellion, only God could offer forgiveness. And it is the glory of the cross that in the person of God's Son, God offers that forgiveness. And so in the cross, we are offered the gift of gracious forgiveness, both for the sins that we know and the sins that we don't know, all covered by the death of Jesus. Truly, I tell you, you will be with me today in paradise. Apart from the act of dying, what frightens us most about death is what lies beyond it. And Jesus on the cross gives us one detail, but one very crucial detail. Today you will be with me. With me. Years later, writing to his friends in the church at Philippi, the Apostle Paul faced the prospect of his own death without fear or foreboding. And he wrote to his friends, I'd rather depart and be with Christ. The same phrase again. What the death of Jesus offers is not information about a place, but about a person who journeys with his people even into the unknown of death. With Christ, in death we are not alone. Death has been disarmed. Woman, behold your son. There on the cross, Jesus commends his mother to the care of the disciple who, above all the others, was closest to Jesus and understood best what Jesus was about. And so, from the cross, Jesus seeks to comfort his mother. Jesus acknowledges that the ties that bind still bind. And through the care and the support and the fellowship 
of human love. Comfort is offered and received. Jesus from the cross takes care of Mary. He makes the arrangements. And then the darkest of the words from the cross. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? For those times when we feel alone, when we feel vulnerable, when we wonder if indeed God might have abandoned us. These words offer two great sources of support and comfort. Firstly, the obvious one, no matter how badly we feel, Jesus has been there. The letter to the Hebrews tells us that he was tested in every way as we are, without giving in to sin and despair. So Jesus knows that feeling. But secondly, and most preciously, even in the midst of the darkness, the God whom Jesus wonders has abandoned him is still my God. He is still reaching out in faith and in trust, believing that God hears him, that God sees him, that God cares. My God is the assurance that overcomes the sense of abandonment. And then Jesus says, I thirst. Just for those who think this whole crucifixion is some piece of play acting because Jesus is the Son of God. He can't suffer. He can't. One of the oldest heresies in, in Christendom. Just for those who think that Jesus knew at the end he was going to be successful and he didn't have to worry too much. This detail rebukes such simplistic wrongheadedness. Jesus' identification with the human scene, with our human life, is total. In his agony on the cross, he thirsts. This is not a charade. This is not play acting. This is the real death of a real man in real time. This is the Son of God giving himself for us. This is as real as it gets. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Behind the mystery of life, beyond the misery of death, is God. A truth we can trust. A power that will hold us. A love that will not let us go but will carry us from this life to the next. And then the final word. It is accomplished. Finished. Completed. Successfully accomplished. Salvation is secured. There is nothing more we need. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Let us pray. O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood has redeemed us, save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord.
go now to live the life of faith, glorying in the cross and trusting in God's redemptive power and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and among you this day and always. Amen. Thank you.